Mr. Erickson, as a, as a sheriff and a police chief and a law enforcement professional, uh, I believe this day in history that the, that the police are better trained and better equipped and better uh, prepared than any time in our history. Uh, the attack on law enforcement is nothing new. We've been attacked many times over the years that we've policed this great country. What is new is the lack of support uh, that has come to us from the federal government, uh, namely this Biden administration. Uh, law enforcement officers work many long hours uh, and to protect their communities, and it's been very disheartening to see what has come out of Washington over the last several years and the major cities in this country. This should be concerning to all Americans. Uh, could you speak uh, to some of these effects, how they've affected the ability to recruit and retain police officers? Yeah, absolutely, and everything you've said is correct. Um, and I've said it before, I think we're facing a generational crisis in recruiting and retention, and, and not just major cities in this country, but communities of all sizes are having a more and more difficult time getting qualified young folks to, to enter into the profession. And there's a lot of reasons why, and, and, and in no sh small measure, it has to do with the, uh, the negative atmosphere that's been born out of this more modern um, uh, incarnation of the anti-police movement. There have been anti-police movements over, over uh, decades and decades, but the modern movement began probably seven, eight years ago, and it's had a debilitating effect on recruiting and retention, and you, you can understand why. Uh, but, but compounding that, you have the problem with a lack of support throughout the arc of the criminal justice system. Law enforcement is only the first part of that justice system. Of, uh, and so you can arrest all the people you want. If prosecutors aren't going to charge them and they're going to be let out, that has a demoralizing effect on the profession. And again, it, it's, a, it's, self, it's sort of a self-fulfilling cycle where it keeps feeding into it, itself. So it's a huge problem. I think we need to change the tone and the rhetoric about how we describe law enforcement across the board. I think we need to universally support and uphold the work that they're doing and make sure that they're funded and resourced appropriately. Thank you very much. And we can all agree on, on uh, that, you know, our law enforcement needs continually updated training. You know, this is a very complex time that, that we're living in. You know, law enforcement is being required to do more than we've ever been uh, asked in my 42 year history as a law enforcement officer. And I think that, that that's something that we've got to come together on is that, you know, the police officers get up every day and go to work to serve their community. They work long hours. They get tired just like everybody else. But, you know, during some of these uh, protests and some of the things that we've seen around the country, uh, you know, the police are baited, they're pushed, uh, and it's sometimes it's not very easy to respond in, in what we would people would think is a normal manner if you feel your life is threatened. So, you know, what I I'm just want everybody to understand is that law enforcement in this country is here for everybody in this room. And what I will say about some of these extremists on both sides, they need to be put in prison. They need to be left in prison so they won't be out here terrorizing the, the good citizens, the taxpayers, and the hardworking people of this community. And I think we could come to some sort of understanding on both sides yeah. about enforcing the law, charging it. people, giving them a trial, getting it done mm -hmm. so that we can better protect society. And again, Ms. Gaines, I'd like to, to commend you for your bravery. And I want to thank all the witnesses for being here today. And, uh, you know, let's figure this thing out. Let's get something done. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I wonder if the gentleman would yield to me individually before yielding back the balance of the remaining minutes yes, of your time. Yes, I, I do. I yield back.